tell me, it took you a while to convince your colleagues that uh, Poland was a good place to do business. They'd all been reading these uh, enthusiastic um, you know, industry uh, magazines and 80% of the stories came from Poland and how much of a success it was and it was, it was seeming like it was uh, a saturated market. Uh, yet uh, you thought differently and now you're building the, the EU's tallest building right here. Yes, that's true. Uh, since I joined the company in 2006, uh, we were exploring mostly Balkans, Ukraine. I visited Albania, Minsk, Kharkov, uh, all those cities around, but not Poland. And I was asking why, as you mentioned, all this Eurobuild magazine, uh, Construction Journal and all the others, they were covering mostly Polish stories. And uh, we thought, okay, it's, it's already saturated. You know, when you look from the small market like uh, Slovakia and Bratislava itself, uh, and you read a lot of stories, so then you think, okay, it's, it's already too, too much of it. Uh, but then I came to Warsaw and I saw the potential, and it took me a few months to, to bring my boss then uh, to Warsaw to look at the potential which I saw. It, it began in a taxi ride, if I remember the story <laughs> yes, correctly. Yes, yes, actually we were uh, landing in Warsaw and we took the taxi to the city center and uh, actually uh, my boss saw the potential already on the way to the city center and he was pointing to some lands and uh, he was pointing to one uh, at that time under construction now really green green place which is Filtry Warszawskie and I said eh, maybe that's not the best place you would like to start development uh, and then he pointed also the site uh, on Chmielna Street, which we are now uh, having under construction with our Barso Place project. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, I've got uh, a whole lot of questions here too, because <laughs> um, this is quite a significant, significant project for uh, for the city. Um, but it's not just significant; it, it, it's been complicated. It's been complicated from the beginning. The, uh, yes. Uh, the, the entire story took longer than you thought it would, and, and uh, it's been a complicated process down to right now today, where you're finding that reliably enough, the construction too is not particularly easy. Yes, definitely. Actually, this taxi ride took place in 2007, so it's let's say this project was with us since our beginning in Poland, uh, and it's been uh, already 11 years. Uh, so, first of all, uh, at that year, uh, there was a legal problem with, with, with the land. Uh, there was a court case uh, about the title uh, to the land. And uh, in 2011, when PKP won the, won the uh, court case, they put the land plot on the market. So, the, they announced a the tender. And actually, we uh, were able to accept, let's say, at that time, quite high price, uh, which was set on, on, on the plot. It was 2011, after crisis years, and uh, not many developers and, and real estate investors wanted to invest uh, 170 million uh, slots in, in, in that land plot uh, with the complicated infrastructure all around. So we did it, and uh, as I mentioned, the complicated infrastructure, so right from the beginning, we had to deal with a lot of issues uh, which were which were connected with, uh, with the project, and it was, uh, you know, heating pipes, uh, uh, service uh, place for the for the uh, central station. Many many of you maybe don't know, but there was underground building uh, next to the central station, next to the rail tracks, uh, serving the the station. There was a, a trafo station uh, providing the energy to the whole central line. Uh, actually, we had to remove it to another premises uh, under the uh, central station. First of all, we had to find them, not PKP. We did. Uh, then we had to uh, draw draw the project. Uh, we had to rebuild it. We had to put it there, and it was uh, happening last May that we were reconnecting the one trafo station to, to the new one. And actually, if we didn't do it correctly, whole Poland would stop for four hours. So that would be definitely not positive PR for us. Uh, so that was a really, really a crucial thing. Uh, so, but we managed, thanks God. Then there was a big uh, sewage pipe with a sewage pump uh, pouring all the sewage from, from the central station. Uh, to the other pipes, and that took us quite a few months uh, to uh, remove it and then uh, build a new one. A uh, lot of other technical questions. Uh, Those were the things that you knew were there, but uh, there were certain things you didn't know were there as well. Uh, there are 48, I think, uh, optical cables, 
and uh, three of those we still didn't identify. And we don't want to cut them because you don't want to have CBA or, or ABEVU or, or army uh, behind our back. So that's something which we, which we are still holding in the air somehow. Uh, so you're going, you're going to, to build the car park around those ducks? Yes, yes, that's true. So and the owners of those ducks will be none the wiser, <laughs> we hope. Yeah. We hope we will never know who are the owners. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't touch it. <laughs> we didn't touch it. Um, but definitely, you, well, you are still convinced that in a couple of years' time, when it's all done, it will have been worth it. Yes, definitely. Uh, I believe so. So uh, one of the challenge was what to what to, what to build there. And uh, actually, we were uh, discussing with several of architects, which we, with whom we have uh, we had already experience, and we were uh, not achieving the, the the thing we wanted. So then we then we came with the idea to to ask Foster and Partners to have a look at it and uh, do the project for us. Uh, so you, you just decided one morning, ring up Sir Norman, Sir Norman, you know, yeah, come down to Warsaw, design <laughs> a building for us? Uh, actually, we had one discussion regarding the one Bratislava project uh, in the past with Foster, so we had a contact. Uh, but after a few years, so, so we ring the, uh, ring the phone back and uh, asked them if they would like to what, join us. What's that been like? Because the, you know, it doesn't get much bigger than Foster Partners. Uh, so... Actually, at that time, we were trying to invite them to the tender for the architects, and they said, oh, guys, not with us, if you want us or not. And we we, say, we don't okay. do tenders. <laughs> we don't do tenders. <laughs> and we say, okay, so uh, let's do it. Uh, after the first offer, I was saying to myself, oh, that's too much. But anyway, uh, we think it, were, it was worth uh, to have, have this, have this uh, deal with them, and uh, you can see uh, the visualization now and, and, and the project which is ongoing. It's, uh, how, it's how has that been a positive experience? Because, I mean, you know, a lot of people here work with architects. A lot of people here are architects. It would be an interesting thing to, uh, to just mention, I guess. I admire a lot of architects who are in our, uh, working in our region, in, in Poland, in, in Czech Republic, in Slovakia. Of course, they are great, uh, but those guys are having like long-term experience worldwide, and their approach was was, was different. You know, first uh, presentation which we got, uh, we got such a book of the way how they thought about the location. It, at the end, there were some visuals of the project, but it was really beginning. But 90% of that book was about the way how they thought about the city, about history of the, of the place, uh, about the location, of the micro location and so on. So it was, it was different approach and, and long, long presentation uh, of quiet listening. <laughs> Shall we take a look? Yes, please. Go on, L roll the movie. It's a, it's a milestone for your company, but the, the company is somewhat unusual in how it, it, how it does business. Um, actually, we, when we are doing the project, we are doing it as, as you would keep it forever. Uh, we are coming from Slovakia, and the investor market there is not that hot as, as, as in Poland or, or Czech Republic or, or Budapest at the time. But uh, uh, we had to think of the buildings as you would keep them, and we want to have like our houses being built uh, that will not be, uh, let's say, asking for renovation every, every second year or something like that. So, so we are using uh, really the best technologies which we can and uh, the best architects. Uh, we are really pushing on, on the quality of the, of the execution. Over time, over the length of the life of the building, you think it's uh, actually cheaper? Uh, yes, and actually when we are starting the project, we don't know exactly what will happen in the market in, in five, seven years. So if, if the market is good enough for selling the, the, the buildings, we can sell them. If not, we are not push to sell them for, for, for lower prices if we don't like it. Mm -hmm. You think, think long and hard about every detail. Um, remember, we, we were talking before, before the, uh, the conference about uh, the, uh, the windows, for example. 
Uh, yes, I mean the tower, uh, usually according to Polish norms, you cannot have openable, openable windows. We don't have them uh, as well. But the Fosters, they came with an idea of openable elements in the facade. So, and now we are coming to the, let's say, echo, echo uh, elements of, of, of that building. So, uh, you know, the, the heating uh, is not that problematic as, as cooling of, of such buildings. So it's taking more energy. So with these openable elements, we can uh, ventilate uh, the tower a natural way, so uh, it, it will be interconnected with the, with the building management system. So in the evening, we push the button and uh, we open the, uh, the openable elements, and they will naturally ventilate the building and, and cool it down. So we will save the energy. So way. cooling in summer is more expensive than heating in winter? Yes, definitely. Of such buildings. Of definitely. such buildings, okay. Um, and I guess uh, fresh air has a direct relationship to how people feel, which has a direct relationship to, to how effectively they, they work. Yeah, definitely amount of oxygen is influencing your, mm -hmm. your productivity. So definitely if we have uh, these this elements of openable, wind, uh, openable elements in, in the facade, uh, you can have more fresh air, more, more oxygen, so, so people should be, should be more uh, efficient. And uh, this is also connected with, uh, with the well certification, which we are doing now. Uh, we are the first uh, building in uh, Europe uh, having the well certification in the construction phase. Uh, also, we are having the, the first BREAM outstanding certification in such a tall office building in the world. So I think this, this, this deserves this, this a are, round of applause. Are elements, uh, really really showing that, that we are taking care of, of uh, how we are doing the project. How receptive are your, your, your clients to, to, to all this? And how, I mean, how do, you, do you work with your clients ahead of uh, signing the leases? How far, how far back does it, does it, does it begin? Uh, at the beginning of the, of the projects, we are doing roundtables with selected clients with whom uh, we have already, already uh, some relationship, and we are discussing with them what they would like to have in their buildings within three, four, five years. Uh, of course, for them it's challenging as well, but there are some ideas they are shooting on us, and we are taking care of them. Then, uh, while we are discussing uh, the lease contracts in our buildings, then definitely we are having a new service line called Origameo, uh, which is analyzing their existing premises, their internal processes. Uh, of course, depends on the client who will allow you to, to, to do it or not. But uh, those uh, who believe in our expertise, uh, they ask us to, to do this uh, research, and uh, according to the uh, uh, that research, we draw the space plan and we draw the design of the space for them. Have you um, noticed um, an increase in interest in, in certification from coming, coming, coming from your, your clients? Uh, maybe not. I mean, those certifications, those, those classic ones which are on the market for many years, uh, they are now like tick box. Mm -hmm. You have to have them. Uh, but the well certification is something new on the market. Uh, not, ma not many of uh, the developers are, are, are in it. Probably they, they will be. But definitely it's something different. It's, it's connected with the, with the experience of the user, uh, of using the space uh, of the air. It's not mostly about ecology, but about the feeling of the people, how well they feel in the building. You also have an unusual approach to involving the public. I mean, this is, um, you know, in Eastern Europe, it's not very common for real, est real estate developers, still not very common. We're hoping a change for developers to actually look broadly at the, at the context of, of the buildings. As we are asking our clients like at the beginning of the projects what they would like to have uh, in, in the project, we are also asking the city and the uh, city authorities or the state authorities, depends who are uh, um, relevant uh, to, to, that, to that stage. And uh, actually we did the same uh, with this project. Uh, after we won the tender, we came to the city authorities, at that time vice mayor responsible for the list the development of the city and uh, ask them what they would like to have there. Actually, there was no master plan, uh, so we didn't have real guidance. Uh, so collaborator is not yes. just a bureaucratic obstacle. Yes, so, so we asked them what, what's, uh, what their preference, and uh, of course, uh, when they said the sky is the limit, so then we took the challenge and we tried to you get uh, as, high, as high as possible. In the, aid, in the end, they cut us by 10, 10 meters. It, it was supposed to be 320, but it's still good enough. Still good <laughs> enough. And you found a rock, a rather large rock. Uh, tell yes, us, we did. Tell us about the rock. <laughs> <laughs> we did. And maybe we should start with the video, which, which, which will show you what it is about.
That is, that is big. <laughs> Where is it now? Uh, it is now located on Pola Mokotov's connects to Biblioteka Naradova, uh, the national uh, library. Uh, and it was uh, quite a challenge, actually, when the guys uh, kicked it out from the ground. Uh, they, were, they were really uh, amazed what it is about. So they asked the professors uh, from the Technical University to, to have a look at it, because it's, it's not something usual which, which uh, you find in the ground. Uh, we found also some, some bombs from the, from the World War II, but that was nothing comparing to this. Uh, so it took us <laughs> took a uh, few weeks to manage uh, removal of, the, of, this, of this boulder uh, to Pola Mokotovske. And uh, actually, it's about two billion years old. Uh, it flew uh, to Poland from Scandinavia 300,000 years ago. Uh, and it's 60 tons heavy, so we had to find a crane which would take it out. So well, after two uh, failures, we had to take the largest uh, uh, crane on the wheels, uh, which is available in Poland, and we had to wait for it uh, for some time. And actually, it's connected with, with the log logistics, which is connected with this, with this, with this site. You know, it's located in, next to the central station. Uh, of course, Aleja Jana Pavla and Aleja Rosonska, those are big, uh, big streets, but uh, heavily, heavily uh, under, under traffic in, in the peak times. And the Khmerla Street is really small. So uh, that was the biggest challenge from our construction managers, how to put deliveries uh, to the place. And thanks God, uh, we got a guy who is sitting right here, and his brother, uh, who are the clever guys, and uh, they came up with the solution, with the application, which is dealing with whole logistics of the, of the construction site. So they are uh, connecting construction managers, security guys, traffic marshals, and the subcontractors with their drivers uh, through simple application. Uh, which is saying to all the people when they should come, when they should leave, uh, what should be the next, and so on. So, so this is something which is helping quite a lot in our construction managers. Uh, otherwise, happy. you cause a traffic jam in yes, the middle of a yes. city of two yeah. million people. We have limited parking places next to the site, so mm -hmm. it needs to be really perfectly organized so that we are not constructing the, uh, the whole project for five years, but rather... It's been a learning experience from, from, from the start. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Shall we take a look? Go on. Well, all I can say is uh, I'm, I'm buying lunch on the top floor when it's, when it's built. So let me invite you to the viewing platforms of the restaurants, which should be open by the end of 2020. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks we'll so have a lunch there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.